Welcome to episode 56 of Kooks on Kooks. First of all, happy Valentine's Day. Yes. Mary is not wearing red. It's orange. It's orange and the hearts are blue. We have to get that out of the way now. So this is Jess. I'm Mary. Uh, As always, we're going to start out with our notable quotable. This comes from our very own Kyle Collinsworth. And this was from an interview that he did with Ben Cardell on ESPN 960 this last week. Definitely says, check that out. In college basketball, it's not over till it's over. You don't want to be that guy that loses hope, and then suddenly BYU starts winning, which could happen. I mean, that's the nice thing about college basketball. You win a few games in yep. March, and your whole season is saved. So don't be that guy. Don't be, don't be that guy. That's what we're saying. Uh, so we're going to start out this Valentine's Day episode with uh, our BYU Valentines. So I think we just did this on Twitter last year, um, but we're going to bring it to the show and we're going to turn it into a contest because we just had so much fun with them last year. Uh, we made, this is like our all-time favorite one that we made for Zach Selyus. I'll put it up. We miss him. What did it say? Will you please be my Valentine? Say <laughs> yes. Will you be my Valentine? Say yes. <laughs> We made a bunch of new ones for this year. Yes, we did. So this year we're going to give away a signed photo of Tanner Mangum. Um, Isn't to, that beautiful? It is beautiful. And his signature is so regal. If you create a BYU Valentine that we love, then you will win that Tanner Mangum photo. Uh, we're going to – so get that to us any way you want. Tweet us, email us, put it on our Facebook. Um, but do it by Friday because today is Valentine's Day. Yeah. Are we limiting that to current players? I uh, know. Anybody, anybody. I think no limits. Okay, that's Just fine. hit us with your BYU Valentines. Cool. All of ours we are said. for current players, but I mean... Do what you want. Yeah. If you want that, you're going to have to send Whatever us your Valentines. heart desires. Let's show uh, just some of the ones we made to give you guys a few more ideas. And if you search that hashtag on Twitter, um, you'll see the ones we did last year. <laughs> but this first one is um, of our beloved Eric Mika, and it's <laughs> probably my favorite one. It says, you Mika, my heart beat faster, Valentine. That's a pretty good pun. Okay. <laughs> These are all bad puns. Yes. But the the worse what, the pun, the better. That's Valentine's Day. Hit though, us right? with your bad puns. Um, of course, TJ has your red hot Valentine, just like TJ. Of right. course. And with Nick Emery, I love Emery thing about you, Valentine. Get it? Get it? Emery thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, of course, we have to do one for Stephen Bayo. He's Mary's favorite. So, hey, Valentine, I'll be... <laughs> How do you say this? Be over. Be over. I guess it would be Bay over. over. <laughs> I'll bay over right after the game. There you go. We actually had to do two Stephen Bale ones. We did another high school musical one that we'll throw up. What did he say? He said, uh, let me be or be the Gabriella to my Troy this Valentine's Day. Because you know Stephen loves looking like Troy. Uh, what about our Peyton one? Um, for Peyton, we had, uh, I'm a row my way straight to your heart this Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got a couple football ones. We did a few uh, Hey Girls, you know, Ryan Gosling style for Tanner. Because he has so many model pictures that we could use. Right. So, hey, girl, I'd take a penalty for you. Just like he did for Taysom, right? That's right. Hey, girl, let's listen to Taylor Swift together. He loves Taylor. And then we had to do another football one for Mo Longy, of course. Because <laughs> everyone right. has mad love for Mo Longy. My love for you is larger than life. <laughs> Just like Mo Longy. Get it. Guys, we're telling you, the worse the pun, the better. Just hit us with we it. We will love them all. But yep. if you want to win, it's going to have to be really good. Yep. So tweet it to us, Facebook us, hashtag BYU Valentine's. You know you want that beautiful picture of Tanner. To remind you. So hashtag BYU Valentine's. Okay, so we're going to go from that into couch coaching um, with Josh Brown. So here's that. All right, time to get into coaching from the couch. And we have a very special guest with us. This is Josh Brown. Thank you. He is at BrownJoshua08 on Twitter, so be sure to give him a follow. He is the former Rock president current BYU Mm -hmm. student, so uh, kind of a big deal. Uh, One of the main reasons we wanted to have Josh on, besides for his super hot takes, obviously, (laughs) is because he was at both the Pepperdine and um, the San Francisco games that were last week. So just to refresh your memory, 99-83 loss to Pepperdine, I hate to say it, and a 68-52 win over San Francisco. So, why don't you tell us, first of all, about your trip? Yes. What did you guys do? What were the highlights? We'll put up some of the pictures. They had too much fun without us. That's what we had to say. It was a blast. We had to make (laughs) sure the trip was well worth the money that we spent on it. (laughs) So, we we flew in on Thursday, went straight to Malibu um, from LAX, Mm -hmm. and got to see the Pepperdine game that night. 
It got was, to? Is that the right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to Malibu. That's the thing. <laughs> Losses are a lot better when you walk out to being in Malibu <laughs> so rather true. than going to class the next day in Provo. <laughs> That's true. So, or like a snowy blizzard. You know, perspective a little bit on that. <laughs> sure. But yeah, wasn't the great the greatest outcome. Yeah. Um, so then Friday we drove up the coast up to San Francisco. And, and you then, made some stops along the way, right? Yeah, we did. So we actually... Took a trip by St. Mary's campus. They had game day there oh, on Saturday. Oh, no big deal. You know, no biggie. Just <laughs> they're playing the number one team in the nation. Yeah. Whatever. Um, we actually walked right into St. Mary's gym, and they were setting up for game day, and we figured, you know, why don't we see if they'll let us take a picture? So we got right behind the game day desk. They turned all the lights on for us and nice. had an official-looking picture, all in BYU gear behind enemy lines. And, uh, <laughs> they didn't chase you out or anything? They did. <laughs> they were actually pretty nice. They told us to take off our shirts, but <laughs> other, than, <laughs> other than that, they were they were really welcoming. Could have been worse. <laughs> could have been, been much worse. We'll put up that picture. That's classic. Rep in the Y cool. at y. game day. You stopped by there Saturday, and then you went to the San Francisco game. Yeah, really fun game, really fun atmosphere. Lots of BYU <laughs> fans showed up to, to both games, mm-hmm. San Francisco game especially. And, yeah, luckily we got the win that night. Yeah. We uh, got to heckle the Sa- the San Francisco <laughs> players a little bit, which was fun. And, yeah, always good to come out with a win. Would you say there were more BYU fans at both games? Definitely. San Francisco, <laughs> just because it was senior night, yeah. they got some uh, some fans out to the San Francisco game. For but, their one senior, I noticed. <laughs> for their one senior. We're one to talk. I know. We don't have any, so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Pepperdine, I think BYU's fans are definitely outnumbered, cool. uh, Pepperdine's fans. Okay, well, we'll get to a little bit more um, of kind of that atmosphere here in a bit, but we're just going to do our regular couch coaching, and let's start with what went wrong. And uh, Josh, why don't we have you start out, because that kind of goes along with the gym theme. Yeah, so I'd always heard about these high school gyms in the WCC, and <laughs> Pepperdine is, is small. I think my high school gym might have been bigger than Pepperdine's, but there definitely was kind of, you saw BYU come out flat oh, in that yeah, gym. The did. You have all of the, the things that we do pregame at the Marriott Center, and just the lack of that. There was kind of a lack of energy going into the game, so you have a team like Pepperdine that's the underdog in the game, but they get a little bit of confidence coming out because BYU came out flat, and yeah. that's all they needed to have a guy go off for 30 points yeah like Lamont did, Murray so. like like you were mentioning you give him a little bit of confidence and that's all he needs for me um they shot 53 percent from three which if we were also shooting 53 percent from three and it was just you know raining no threes deal. that's great that's fun um we weren't we shot 23 percent in our win over USF and I think we were 28 percent against um Pepperdine yeah so it was, it was really low when you let a team like Pepperdine shoot 53 percent from behind the arc against you, that doesn't say anything good about your defense. That's all that really needs to be said. <laughs> Jess, what do you think? Coach Tyler, crap. And we Coach always Brown. the coach thing. <laughs> so I, I was thinking about it this week, you know, after that Pepperdine loss. Why do we keep losing to teams like this? <laughs> and, yeah, and for me, and I think anyone who's played sports knows this, if you've been on a team before, it doesn't matter how much talent you have on a team, if you don't have time playing together – and knowing how you all work together, it doesn't matter how much time you have. You can lose to teams that you probably should beat. And I think that's what our problem is. I mean, going back to the very beginning of the season, you know, we didn't have Elijah Bryant at first. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up losing Kyle Davis early. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you've got other guys who get hurt. you got Nick who had a little knee thing. I don't know if he's back or not. Sometimes he is, sometimes he's not. (laughs) Um, And then you have... um, LJ, who's gone now. Yeah. So anytime you lose someone like that, you essentially start over with mm-hmm. your team, and you got to figure out who's going to play where. You have some guys switching positions, and just being on the floor together, it's not comfortable. Essentially, you've got sort of a new team in the last few weeks, ever since LJ went down. It's true. Every game, it looks a little different. I mean, we've never seen Peyton be the first big off the bench, but <laughs> yeah. out of necessity, it's just a lot of things change. So I think that does affect it. Um, All right, let's move on to happier things. Let's start with you again, Coach Brown, for what went right in these two games because there there were a few things. We won a game. Coach Brown, I like the sound of that. (laughs) But, you know, it's always hard. You saw towards the end of the Pepperdine game with all the offensive fouls. We don't even need to go off on that. But you saw the frustration kind of in the players. And so a positive for me was to see the way that they bounced back. 
in the San Francisco game. You saw the energy. You saw them want to win um, and really kind of trust in each other. You saw Yoli have a big game, Yoli Childs. Huge. He talked about players, you know, really trusting in him, trusting his shot, getting him the ball. And so just the way that we bounced back as a team, really you saw that effort um, to go get that win against San Francisco was big. And can we mention that win really was big because it was for sole possession of their place in the WCC, Yeah. which is huge because a four seed is going to face, you know, a Gonzaga or St. Mary's or whatever a lot earlier in the tournament than a three seed. So huge. And it um, was a road win. Yeah. I will take any road <laughs> yeah. win. Yeah, yeah, to be honest, I, I kind of had a feeling we would split that road trip just because of how we play on the road, but I thought that it would. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite yes, way around. Exactly. Um, all right, Coach Tyler, what do you got? Um, so the, the Pepperdine game, again, we mentioned before they scored 99 points and that was so Do high above their average. I know it was <laughs> way too far above their average of what they've been scoring. Yeah. But then you have San Francisco where we hold them to what was 53? 52, 52, which is crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, again, that's a good turnaround to see that defense and, and they, you know, they made 12 threes, but they shot like 43. Yeah. It could have been worse. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I do feel like there there is improvement for me i chose a what went right from the pepperdine game just to you know i good for you gotta find the positives i'm, gotta find I'm the an positives. optimist right uh <laughs> nick emery <laughs> we could maybe say nick emery was the thing that went wrong in the san francisco game <laughs> but for pepperdine he looked great and i was just really glad to see nick have a game like that to know that he still can i mean he really has been in the sophomore slump um, but to see him show up on the road and to be hitting those shots, that's what we need to see from him consistently. But I liked to see it against Pepperdine. Josh, thank you for uh, coming on. To Coach, Coach Brown, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you so much to Josh for coming on and telling us about his horrible, awful road trip that we're jealous we didn't get to go on. Yeah, horrible, awful. <laughs> so no. let's get into uh, Talk of the Town. We're going to start with a kind of Valentine. Well, it's not really Valentine's themed. We just paint this as a bromance that we adore. It is a bromance. <laughs> it is a bromance. We love it. Um, and we haven't gotten anything for a while, so it was great to get this. Um, Matt Hadley tweeted it. If you aren't following him, he's pretty new to Twitter. It's at Versace underscore Matt, too. He needs to tweet more. Because he's his Twitter game is good for uh-huh. being new. But he said, I'm grateful for this guy and all he does for me. A aw. <laughs> Thanks for the painting, homie. Love you, bro. Like, there is so much love in that tweet. <laughs> Cute picture. And I guess Tanner commissioned a painting for him. I know. Was it his birthday? I mean, I don't know. But, I mean, I've been married like five years and no one's ever commissioned a painting <laughs> for me. So that's a pretty intense bromance. It's <laughs> that pretty intense. And that's a cool painting. Well, Beauty football. <clears throat> Football is still a thing. Yep. Um, announced that they have an agreement for games in the future with San Diego State and Ooh. with McNeese State. Who? Uh, I don't know. I <laughs> saw a really funny tweet where someone was like, I've heard of McNeese State, but who's San Diego State? So uh-huh. it's going to be really fun to see that rivalry come back to life because let's be honest, it never really died. I feel like BYU and San Diego State still, uh, there's no love lost there and playing each other with Definitely we'll not basketball. Back. And they're actually decent in football now, so that's new. It's true. And so um, we're going to play SDSU at SDSU in 2019, and then it'll be in Provo in 2020, and then um, McNeese State, which I think is in Texas, um, they're going to come out here sometime in 2018. Not sure on the exact date yet. Yeah, just a couple days, <clears> and we'll <throat> figure it out later. So Back to basketball. Back to basketball. So we mentioned a little bit with Josh, but mm-hmm. game day was in um, – Moraga for uh, the Gonzaga St. Mary's game. What a cool thing for the WCC to be in the spotlight like that. Yeah, well, it's hard to ignore. I think they try to ignore the WCC a lot. They, they do. Especially with Gonzaga, they always say they're overrated, yeah. but you could not say that this year. Yeah, and I think that was one of the best games in the nation on Saturday was Gonzaga and for St. Sure. Mary's. Um, Gonzaga did win that, by the way, so they remain untouched. Beaten. Yep. <clears throat> but cool that they were there. Speaking of the California road trip, there was a guy in a cougar costume at like the San Francisco game. Costume. And Josh actually said he was, like, sitting right behind this guy. Josh, that might be Josh's, like, hands in the picture. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. He was just decked out in a cougar costume. Props. Sure. We all need one. Yoli section. Time for the Yoli section. Oh, Yoli section. This is my favorite tweet of the week. I think we should probably award one of those. Yoli even retweeted it. Yeah, this is John Latin and on Twitter. It says, me, go to sleep. You have church meetings. Also me, make a terribly photoshopped pun celebrating Yoli Childs. And he did. 
holy so guacayoli. you you thought our <laughs> valentines were punny check that out holy guacayoli that's so great yoli and he in had a such a good game that's probably the only time yoli's ever been in a sombrero that's Not me. probably true that's a good one though i always appreciate bad pun okay so yoli again um take him out of the sombrero and uh our girl callie day tenny she's at callie bra tweeted yoli child equals the fresh prince of provo I had never thought about it, but that is such a good comparison. So good. I, of course, made a pick stitch that we'll put up for you. The resemblance, you can't deny it. I mean... It's mostly the hair. I, yeah, and I mean, I wouldn't say they're like twins, but definitely cousins. And Yoli is fresh and a prince and, you know... All of those things. Sure. It's our favorite. <laughs> yeah, so after the, the San Francisco game, I was listening to Gregor Bell's post game, and he had Yoli on because he had a career day. And um, so Jay Drew tweeted out what they were talking about. He says, Yoli Child said he usually prays before games that he'll get rebounds and play well. This time he just prayed that he won't get fouls. And what he happened? He did not have – I didn't even realize he didn't have any fouls until after the game. Which no fouls. Let's, that has not happened for Yoli that this year. That is literally a miracle. And he fouled out against Pepperdine, which is probably why he was praying that he wasn't going to get in foul trouble because that probably killed him that he wasn't able to contribute more against Pepperdine. But – well, you play differently. You play more timid when you get fouls, too. For especially sure. when you're worried about it. But, but not it worked. Today. The power of prayer is real. <laughs> that kid has some faith. <laughs> what did Greg say? Greg, Greg told him yeah, to keep afterwards, he was like, for that. He's like, maybe try that next game, too. Can we have, like, a <laughs> fan-wide prayer? Oh, I know. That's what Mark Durant said. He was like, you'll have all of Cougar Nation praying for your next game. We're kind of ending Talk of the Town on a sad note. Um, it's going to be senior night on Saturday, our Which very last sad home enough, game. That's can I say, sad. I hate senior day because it means there's no more basketball. And well, really and it's sad when you have a lot of seniors that you love, but it's, it's almost equally sad when you have two seniors who are recovering from knee surgery. Both of that them. That is true. We have two seniors, both captains. Both recovering from knee surgery. They're both going to hobble out there I, on the ugh. court and get their little blankets. Everyone prepare yourselves because it's going to be kind of sad. But uh, we are hoping, I mean, we're crossing our fingers and maybe we'll do Yoli style and pray that LG might be able to make it back um, for the WCC tournament. So That would be good. <clears throat> Either way, that's the last two home games. So. Yes, yes. speaking of that, as for what's next, that it is, is next. the last two home games. So who do we got first? San Diego at 9 o'clock Mountain at the Marriott Center. We're It'll white. Be- on ESPNU, mm-hmm. so if you can't be there, watch it. But yeah, this last two games. Go if you can be there. And if you forgot, we lost to San Diego earlier this season. And then our last home game of the season is going to be on Saturday. That will be against mm, number 22, St. Mary's. No big deal. Uh, having a very good season. And to remind you, we also lost to them last time at um, in Moraga. That was an 81 60 eight loss so hopefully we're able to avenge that uh but that's yeah like i said at 8 p.m that will be on espn too if you can't make it i'm expecting a closer to gonzaga like atmosphere for that game hopefully It'll don't let fun. us down um, sponsors this week number one is the number 23 not for michael jordan and not for Draymond green but for our our boy yoli who scored 23 points um and that's also his number our second sponsor is um our newest byu power couple they got engaged over the weekend and that's mckenna santiago on the volleyball team and keaton kringle on the baseball team you know we love our byu power couples (laughs) so anyway happy valentine's day may you always stay loyal to the white and blue for jess i'm mary we'll see you next week don't forget to enter